Alright, so we got another insane chapter, and like I said already in my review of chapter 48, the fight just seems to keep getting better and better, in a way that makes me feel like I have no idea how this will end. Like at this point, I don't even know if there will even be a winner or a loser, especially after this chapter, because this round, round 6, is absolutely like nothing we've seen so far in the story. Like just looking at the progression on how this fight has come along from the time Buddha declared he was a traitor to, by the time we learned the origin story of the 7 gods in Zero to, Buddha's backstory, and so much more. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it's because of how unique this situation is, Buddha versus Zero, that I really can't blame anyone for believing Buddha wins or Zero wins or this ends in a draw or if we even see a rematch. There's just so many ways this could go on and so let's just get into it because there's a lot to talk about here. So right when it looked like the match was over, we're seeing Zero turn back into his original form, the true form he was always supposed to have that we saw him in before he took in everyone's misfortune. We're even seeing Okita, Kojiro, and Bruinhild all looking down like they think the fight's pretty much over but then suddenly before Zero even has a moment to surrender we're shown the horns that fell off his head just force themselves back in almost like screws except they just drive themselves back into his head and this next part is kind of disturbing it's almost like watching someone get fully possessed when we see Zero stand back up which I guess is the power of the horns making him do this and the horns just upscale in size before they fly out from his head uh, with one going into his mouth and the other in the hole in his chest and this next part is really curious so we see Zero's eyes go black and his voice trembling here when he's just saying uh, no I don't I don't but then when he says I don't want it seems we hear a separate voice at the same time saying I yearn for and from my interpretation this line when he says I yearn for isn't actually Zero speaking here and I'm gonna go back to this line later in the video. So then out from the hole in his chest and mouth we straight up just see two dragons fly out into the sky and then come down and wrap themselves around Zero and this next part is just really really tragic right when we see Buddha reach out to Zero trying to save him and Zero asking for help but then it looks like one of the dragons just send Buddha flying back as he just watches them uh, take shape around Zero. And so by the time the dragons are done what we see left is just a large ball shaped egg and the first one to say anything about it with any idea as to what it was is actually Aphrodite when she calls it unsightly implying she has some idea as to what it was before it even opened. And so when it finally does open we're shown what almost looks like Zero on steroids this thing just looks like an absolute tank when it finally rips itself open from the inside of uh, the ball shaped egg and it's covered in some kind of black liquid with these horns that are way bigger than what we saw on Zero or even on Bishamon. And this next part is actually so cool on Buddha's part where we find out the reason Buddha jumps away from it is because he realizes that he can't use his future vision on it, pretty much countering this part of his enlightenment. And just when things couldn't get any more crazy, the story then shifts to the chambers of the future fighters and we see someone mysterious watching the fight on a monitor saying, so this is what became of that, which I imagine by this he's referring to Zero's new transform uh, transformation, and by that he's referring to Zero's pre-transformation. And then we come to find out that the person saying this is actually Beelzebub, one of the fighters for the gods, and this just makes this even way more complicated, I have so many questions, but and then he goes on and refers to this new version of Zero as the legendary berserker of the netherworld, demon lord of the sixth heaven, Hyjin, and then we go back to the arena seeing Hyjin giving Buddha a stare down when suddenly the black liquid that was dripping off him just rises back and forms itself into clothing. And then we're seeing Hajin saying, uh, divine retribution cometh, which I guess is him finishing that line that I said earlier uh, to Buddha when he was possessing Zero and said, I yearn for. Meaning the final phrase is, I yearn for divine punishment cometh. And now that Buddha's picked his staff back up and we've already seen it use four of the six transformations, the only two we have left to see from it are holy cannon and thousand armed cannon. But now that this isn't Zero fighting anymore, I have no idea how this will turn out because technically Hajin is a demon, right? And so I don't think calling this Zero's third transformation makes a lot of sense because this isn't Zero anymore. Or at least that's what I understood from what Beelzebub had to say. And I can agree with that because I'm more inclined to call this a possession than a transformation and that would make sense I think because the whole time Zero was just very anti-Buddhist, right? Like he was against the teachings, he wanted to kill Buddha and drove himself insane for that motive but now that he's finally agreed with himself to let all of that go, it's like the aggression he had still had no choice but to manifest itself. Because there's a difference between not believing in something because you just don't have the faith for it and believing in the complete opposite of that faith. So because I would say Zero was heavily on the extreme and opposite side of the Buddhist spectrum where he wasn't just in a disagreement or didn't care for Buddhism. He outright was against the teachings and Buddha himself. I think because he was on the extreme with all this hate and dedication it just had to manifest itself into what Heijin is. And I think this makes a lot of sense if you know who 
a Heijin is. Like, I don't know much about Buddhism, but just a quick Google search and you'll find Heijin is an actual Buddhist figure, a demonic being. And so seeing two sides of the coin here, Buddha versus Heijin makes me believe this is a more of a possession on Zero than it is a transformation. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier, that because each chapter just keeps changing the conditions of the fight more and more, now we're seeing Buddha, a god representing humanity versus Heijin, a demonic being representing the gods. Do you know what I mean? It's just getting really hard to believe either side will win or if this ends in a draw or if we need a rematch I have no idea and then there's Belzebub who I feel knows a lot more than what he's letting on maybe especially by the way he refers to Hyjin or Zero just makes me wonder what he knows about Zero if anything at all because we were told that it wasn't known by the majority of the gods who Zero even was so there's a lot of hype I feel behind Belzebub right now really interested to see if he shows up again in the later chapters all right guys so that's going to be it for me let me know how you guys all felt about the chapter especially with how you think this fight will end because it looks like we've only got a few more chapters left in the fight but let me know how you feel about Beelzebub too I already know there's a lot of hype on him so I can't wait to see where the story goes on with him but I'm gonna end it there guys if you like the video please leave a like I'd greatly appreciate it let me know how you're feeling in the comments and if you're interested in more record of Ragnarok content please subscribe if you're down I'll be doing more and yeah thank you so much for watching guys have a great day